Kids today probably don't appreciate holograms like I did when I was a kid. When I first saw a hologram, I was blown away. It was so magical. And now that I pretend that I'm an adult, I get to explore and figure out how these things work. Before we can look at holograms, we have to get two things out of the way. Diffraction and interference. Let's start with interference first. Holograms are made with lasers, and lasers emit coherent light. Simply put, coherent light is light that's all of the same frequency and parallel and the same phase. In the first experiment, I'll be taking a green laser pointer, splitting the beam, and delaying one path, and then recombining to show fringe patterns of interference. In regions where the light is in phase, we'll see brighter reflections. And where it's out of phase, the peaks and valleys are opposite, we'll see less light reflected. On the bottom left is a green laser pointer with a lens tape to it to spread the beam. The beam passes through a 45 degree angle piece of glass which splits it into two pieces. Both beam paths strike mirrors and come back to the beam splitter and are combined and shot out to the right and projected onto the wall. Any difference in path length will change the phase and we'll see this as light and dark spots or fringe patterns. Here are the two beams projected on the wall across the room. I'm lining them up by moving the mirrors. Once the mirrors settle, we'll start to see fringe patterns. Right now, there's so much movement, the fringe patterns are just a blur. Here's after settling for a while. We can see the fringe patterns as uh, semicircular lines. The fringe patterns are moving for many reasons. The mirrors are still settling, vibrations in the table, and even air motion. This is why it's critical to produce holograms on vibration dampened tables. This is the configuration that my friend Kevin used to make the kitty cat hologram I'm using in this example. My holograms didn't turn out nearly as well. So we used a helium neon laser and a beam spreader that hit a beam splitter. I made a reference beam that struck the film. And then the beam that went directly through the splitter hit the subject. And depending on the distance of the different features on the subject, it changed the path length and the phase difference, and these get recorded onto the film as light and dark spots, just like on the fringes that we saw in the previous demo. Now that we know how holograms are made with interference patterns, we can start to examine how we view them with diffraction. To demonstrate diffraction, I have a laser above, two razor blades to form a slit, and a very precise threaded rod to control the gap. When light passes through the slit, it's influenced and turned into circular waves, which interfere with each other. By changing the width of the slit, it changes the properties of the interference patterns, more or less fringes. This was a very simple example of a one-dimensional diffraction, whereas a hologram is two-dimensional and very complex. A holographic plate doesn't look like much under regular room light. It looks like dark swirls and random patterns. But when you shine the laser as a point source on a piece of paper and hold the plate up, you can see the image. For the longest time, I didn't understand why each eye received a unique image. That was until someone shined a laser through the plate itself. Here you can see that a very small region of the plate actually contains all the information for a particular angle. As I move the laser pointer around, you can see that the image itself is being projected and moving around for different angles. The detail is incredible in this. You can even see reflections off of the grains of sand. As I pull the plate back, the image gets bigger. The wavefront just continues to propagate out and uh, I can project clear across the room. Since we have control of what angle we project out, we can do some fun things like use a red and green laser pointer and 3D glasses to project 3D images. It's not perfect, but it works. As you can see here, there's a difference in scaling when you use different wavelengths of light. The violet color, this is due to diffraction at different wavelengths. I believe an improvement on this would be to use the same wavelength of light and polarizers on the way out. Well, that's all I have for today. Thanks for taking time to watch.